Over the years since I've been old enough to watch the hilarious cartoon series South Park, I've enjoyed the fact that the writers, very much like me, are equal opportunity bashers. They take on public figures, celebrities, movements, groups, doesn't matter, racial, religious, economic, they take them all on with reckless abandon and they never make any apologies for any offense taken. They've taken on molestation, Saddam Hussein, Barack Obama, stem cell research, heaven and hell, Barbara Streisand, Jennifer Lopez's big butt, John Edwards, social justice warriors, Jared Fogle, Michael Jackson, sex change, and many, many other controversial topics and figures. And I appreciate that in humor. Minus the few eye-rolling moments here and there peppered throughout his routines, I find Kevin Hart to be a very funny dude. I'm also a big fan of Ali Wong and the ever-irreverent Louis C.K. I despise political and cultural correctness not only because it's adjacent to and one very small step away from eradicating free speech, but also because it's nearly impossible to be funny while being politically correct. Human beings, we're funny creatures. We do strange things. We have weird qualities and often bizarre behavior. And I find humor relating to those things to be the one thing that can bring the masses together with a healthy dose of equally distributed hurt feelings. When comedians make fun of things that white people do, I'm fine with that. I'm a big girl and with my job and the considerable amount of opprobrium and censure I receive, a little joke here and there at my expense is completely palatable in an effort to obtain the greater good of making the world a funnier, more lighthearted place to live. So when South Park did an episode about Donald Trump, I was fine with that. When they did an episode about Hillary Clinton, that was even better. And it's important to note that oftentimes when a person or organization, or in this case, a cult, is the subject of a South Park episode, it often becomes the focal point of future conversations. In the case of their episode on Scientology, prior to its airing, not many people knew what or cared what Scientology was. But after the South Park episode on it mocked many of the bizarre aspects of it, people started talking about it. And today, after years and years of abuse of its members and ongoing investigations, President Trump is considering revoking their tax-exempt status, which will hopefully uh, hamper them and effectively halt their existence. I'm probably going to have some strange men busting through my door tonight in the name of Xenu, so if I don't put out a video tomorrow, call the cops. Also, prior to South Park, no one knew what NAMBLA was. If you missed that episode and still don't know, look it up. It's pretty disturbing. But the point is, funny is funny no matter who the deliverer or the recipient is. If you're offended over something said or portrayed in South Park, don't worry, they'll be moving on to someone else soon. It's like the quote that I think is most often attributed to Mark Twain. If you don't like the weather, wait a minute. South Park has done an impeccable job of satirizing equally. As I said, I've appreciated that about the show. And I've always had a hunch that the creators, Trey Parker and Matt Stone, might not be liberals like most comedians here in Hollywood. Now, why would I think that? Why would I have such a crazy notion? Because most liberal comedians have a very, very hard time criticizing their own. The fact that Trey Parker and Matt Stone do so with such gliding ease is a pretty good indicator of where their political beliefs lie. And now we unequivocally know Larry Elder, who is one of my favorite politicos from the right, right here in LA, he's known as the Sage of South Central. He tweeted on Friday, Trey Parker and Matt Stone of At South Park asked me to introduce them when they received a Freedom Award from the Norman Lears organization. After they graciously accepted, they said, we are Republicans nervous laughter. They repeated, no seriously, we're Republicans. <laughs> My gosh, to see the reaction of the people in that room. And though he started a First Amendment advocacy group called People for the American Way, Norman Lear is highly progressive. But hey, Norman, you're all about free speech, so it's all good that they're Republicans, right? You're not going to shut them down or revoke their award, right? Right. Kind of puts you in a corner there, huh? Good. That's where all you lefty progressive political activist hypocrites belong. Facing your own hypocrisy and staring in the mirror, seeing your own double standards of hate against the right. Get comfortable because the hit sitcom Roseanne aired their first reboot episode and Roseanne plays a Trump supporter on her show. So prepare for your questionable and vacillating support of free speech to be tested. We'll be watching for your reaction. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Amanda Head, the Hollywood conservative for The Rebel. If you enjoyed my commentary and want to hear more from all of us here at The Rebel, subscribe to our premium content at www.therebel.media forward slash shows and make sure you're following us on Facebook and Twitter for all of our latest news. 
Also, download our new app for the Rebel Media on the App Store. Download it and you will have access to all of our latest videos and your favorite Rebel shows. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Amanda Head for the Rebel.